So we're going to discuss linear inequalities today, how to graph those things, even what they look like, what they're supposed to look like, and then how to do it in a way that should be pretty easy for you. Would you like to learn all that today? Yeah. Of course you would. Well, let's review what it means to be a linear equation first, and then we'll translate that into linear inequalities. Hey, by the way, the key word in linear, what's that mean? So when we're talking about linear equations, what we're talking about are these equations that when I graph them, they're going to make a straight line. Well, not a curvy line, just a straight line that goes on forever and ever and ever. That's what we mean here. So a linear equation, we really had two forms. We had this one. Or we had this one. Hopefully you're familiar with those two forms. What's the first form called? What is that? Standard form. Good, that is standard form. And this one down here, the y equals mx plus b, what's that one? Slow. Slow. And if you graph forms of equations that look like this, like this, what you're going to get out is just a straight line on the x, y axis. Now, normally, we like to work with this one, right? Because we know that we don't need tables to draw any of these lines. I do not want to see you drawing tables anymore. Uh, we're past that. We, we know we should be able to go to this uh, intercept, use a slope to find the next point, and we graph that in like five seconds. I mean, that's really, really quick. Very much faster than a table is. However, I haven't shown you how to graph a line using standard form. Maybe no one ever has. I'm going to show you that today, that sometimes we can use standard form to graph a line like that. Uh, it is, it's fast. It's kind of nice. Have you ever seen that? If you have, well, then you're, you're in for a little review. If you haven't seen it, this might be something new for you, a different way to graph a line. You'd like to learn that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kind of nice. So if, our, if these are linear equations, the only difference we have from a linear equation to a linear inequality is... Well, let's just let's change that equal sign, and then we have a linear inequality. So if these are linear equations, all we're doing for a linear inequality is changing that symbol. So instead of the equal sign, we could have less than or equal to some constant. And remember, this, this inequality here doesn't necessarily have to be less than or equal to. You could have a less than or a greater than or equal to or a greater than. Any of those four symbols that we've been working with in this class, it could be there. So let me give you our, your very first example of a linear inequality. Hey, firstly, what form would that be in? Is that uh, standard form or slope-intercept form? What do you think? Standard. That's definitely standard form. It's got the both variables on the left-hand side, the constant on the right-hand side. So we are dealing with our standard form here in this case. Hey, what's a solution? You know, before when we dealt with just regular old equations, we could solve them. We had like x equaled something, y equaled something. What's a solution for our case up here? What is a solution here? How many variables do you have? So if I say x equals 3, is that enough to make a solution here? No. So what's a solution? Two answers. Two, well, you're going to have two numbers, right? Yeah. You're going to have x equals something, and are you also going to have y equals something? Uh -huh. Hey, when you have x and y put together, what, what is that? When you have x and y put together? What's that? That's that. Point. That's a point. Our solutions here are going to be points on a graph. Well, wait, wait a second. Just think about that for a second. Shouldn't that make sense that our solutions are point? Aren't we graphing this thing on an x, y axis? So our solutions, they're, they're points. It's x comma y, and that set of numbers, that ordered pair, has to be a solution to this inequality. Are you guys with me here? Stay, stay focused. I know it's Monday. I know it's early. But stay focused on this stuff. This is kind of an important lesson for us. 
So we have these things called linear inequalities. We know they look like this with inequalities here instead of equations. However, we're still going to be getting straight lines. The solutions are still going to be ordered pairs. It's just a set of numbers. It's x comma y that work or that make this inequality true. That's what we're looking at getting through. So a solution is an ordered pair. XY, the solution is an ordered pair XY that makes that inequality true or that satisfies that inequality. Hey, let's try a few. Let's try the point zero, zero. What I'm, what I'm asking here is let's try zero, zero. Let's plug it into our inequality. Let's see if it's a solution or not. Can we do that together? What's our x value? Zero. What's our y value? Zero. Sure, they're both zero. That was an easy one. OK, let's plug both those in. Uh, 3 times 0 plus 5 times 0, how much is this side going to be? Zero. Are you with me on this, folks? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, we have 0 plus 0, hopefully that's still 0. We get 0 less than 15. Is that true or is that false? Sure, it's true. You have to be very, very, very good at, at realizing whether these things are true or false, because this ultimately is how we're going to be able to graph these linear inequalities in about 10 minutes, okay? So you're going to be really good at telling whether things are true or false. This one is definitely, definitely fault, uh, true. <laughs> Didn't you have to be good at that? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely true. For sure, zero is less than 15, right? If you have zero dollars, you have less than 15 dollars. So this is a true statement. Very true. Let's try a couple more. Let's try uh, one comma two. Let's try one, two. In this case, how much is our x? Our x is hopefully just 1. How much is our y? 2. Plug those numbers in. See what you get on the left-hand side. So we're going to do 3 times 1. We'll do 5 times 2. 3 times 1 plus 5 times 2. How much do you get there? Is that a true statement? Mm -hmm. So, so far, if we've made a true statement, this is a solution, this is a solution. Let's try a couple more. Let's try those ones. Let's do the 1 comma 5. Here it says our x will be 1. That's our x coordinate, right? It says our y will be 5. Let's plug that in because that's our y coordinate. If we plug in 1 and 5 respectively for x and y, 3 times 1 gives you how much? 3. 5 times, that would be 5. 5 times 5 here gives you... So altogether we have... Uh, true or false? So is this one a solution? No. 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 So the ones that make true statements, those are solutions. The ones that don't make true sta statements, or in other words, make false statements, those are not solutions. I want you to do the last one on your own, see if you have a solution or not, okay? You don't have to say it out loud, just do it in your paper. Three times negative two plus five times ten. I'm thinking that's how much? Forty-four. 44. True or false? false? Definitely false. How many people feel okay on determining whether a point will give you a solution or not? 
Now, one note about this. I want you to look at this for a second. Did any of these actually equal 15 when I plugged this in? What that means is this. This is interesting. I hope you're kind of figuring this out. If I had a linear equation, watch on the board here real quick. Don't change your paper, but, but watch me change my board here. If I had that, do you realize that none of these would be solutions? None of those. They'd have to be equal to, right? And that would represent the points that are actually on the line. Do you with me? Or actually, it'd be this way. On the line. Well, if none of these points are actually on this line, yet they are still solutions to this inequality, what that means is this. These points are not going to be on the line. They're either going to be, watch, watch my hands here, they're either going to be above the line or they're all going to be below the line. But what this represents, all these solutions are either on one side or the other. So our solution set is not necessarily just going to be a line. It's going to be an entire, what's called a half plane. Half of the graph is going to be uh, shaded in, and half of the graph is going to be unshaded. So these solutions represent an entire half of a graph. You with me on this stuff? They're not on the line. In fact, no point, because that's not even equals to, is going to be on this line. They're all either going to be above it or below it. But those represent our solutions. That's a whole bunch of points. That's a lot of stuff. You with me? So are these actually on the line? No. They're either all above the entire side or all below that entire side. One side's going to work, one side's not going to work. So let me make that note for you so that uh, you can remember that when you're graphing these things. So note, <clears throat> there's more than one solution. In fact, an entire side of the line, side, half plane, is going to be a solution set. There's more than one solution. In fact, one entire side of our line, and that's called a half plane, is going to be our solution set. One entire side. That's interesting. You've never seen that before in mathematics. You've never seen where one entire side of an xy axis is a solution. And you're seeing that now. That these solutions are more than just the line. It's all the points either above or below that line. We're going to find out how, in fact, we, we can find out what the solutions are. Bless you. Would you like to see how to do that? Let's graph one of these. It's kind of exciting, right? This is brand new stuff for you. Have you ever seen this before? No. Well, if you have, well... Forget you guys that. Right? If you've seen it before, <laughs> whatever. Just pretend. Pretend this is me. Now, mo most of you have never seen this before. <clears throat> or if you have, it was very brief and you really didn't get into the whole why this stuff works. But now we will. Well, as is my usual, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you some steps on how to do this example. Before I do that, I want to make sure there's no questions. I'm going to have to race this for our steps. Are there any questions on this stuff? So we find out that these things are straight lines. However, our solutions are not just the line itself. Our solutions.